Hello everyone, so in this video we'll be uh, talking about color images. So in previous video we've been dealing only with grayscale imaging images and now we are adding the color dimension and the color information for the pixels. So I have here prepared a notebook where I load, where I load uh, um, this time an RGB uh, picture. So RGB is the most uh, common way of encoding the color information in an image. Uh, so with the red, green, and blue channel, the reason for uh, RGB uh, being both that this is uh, related to the way we perceive the colors in our eyes, and also um, to the way that uh, we display the images on the, on the screen. So there is a direct link between the uh, RGB uh, pixel value of the image and the uh, intensity of the red, green, and blue uh, lights that are put in the monitor to, uh, to, to produce the, uh, the final color of the uh, image. Um, so if we, if we take a look at um, inside the, um, the array that's created by the inread uh, method here, we'll see that um, in addition to the uh, two dimensions that we previously had for grayscale images, so the, 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 the height and the width of the image, um, we this time also have a third dimension, which is the uh, color dimension with the three color channels, red, green, and blue. And so um, and it's, it's still uh, included as 8-bit uh, unsigned integer for each of those dimensions. So instead of having just one value between 0 and 255, we have three values from 0 and 255 encoding the uh, color. Um, what we can do is take a look at those uh, channels separately. So the, the way to do that here, um, I'm plotting on, on the figure uh, three subplots. So to divide, I can divide my plots in three uh, sub images. Um, and um, in each of those subplots, I will be showing every pixel in the columns, every pixel in the, uh, so in the, in the rows, every pixel in the columns, uh, and only the first channel for this one, then the second, then the third. So this, this will give me uh, only the red channel, this will give me only the uh, green channel, and this the blue channel. And so if I look at uh, the results, uh, yeah, and I put them in uh, grayscale uh, so that it feels more natural to, 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 to look at it. Um, so in this case, uh, white um, is, uh, means uh, so high values and black means dark values. Uh, so what can we uh, tell from from these uh, from looking at this at this channel separately? Well, we can uh, find that, uh, as expected, the values from the sky and the sea are much higher in the blue channel than on the two others. So this is the uh, strong blue color that we can find in the in the sky and in the uh, water. Um, and for most of the rest of the image, we have fairly similar, uh, a fairly similar look for all three channels. So this is uh, an indication that for um, most of the regions of the image, um, if we have similar values for red, green, and blue, it generally means that it's a kind of grayish color, uh, so uh, at least uh, more dull, dull colors uh, rather than something really, really bright. Uh, and so that's what we find in the uh, on the beach and on the cliff, uh, and even even in the grass. It's not very uh, it's like bright green or something. It's uh, a lot duller, and that in that for that reason it will uh, it will be fairly similar values in the red, green, and blue channel. Uh, and you can see if we mouse over here, we have actually the the, the the triplet of value in the bottom right of the of the plot, and we can see it's always uh, fairly similar value on all three channels. Uh, which indicate again something more in the gray tones. Um, so another way to, to, to look at it is to, um, to uh, display the uh, histogram of each color. So in this time, just like with the grayscale histogram before, with the grayscale histogram, we lose all of the spatial information about the data, but uh, we gain a better sense of the distribution of the value um, in, the, in, the, in the different pixels. And we can do the same with the colors, looking at the three um, distribution separately. So we can look at the distribution of red values, of green values, and of blue values. Um, so once again, I put, it in the, I put them in, uh, in a plot uh, here. Um, and so the first one is the red and green and blue again. Um, so what can we see here? Well, 
it's not uh, necessarily easy to, um, to to interpret these kinds of, of histogram because um, each pixel is associated with the three values and not, uh, so the, those three are not really uh, independent even though we are looking at, at them uh, in, in this way but we can already see some some things uh, that, that, that kind of jump jump out uh, from from these uh, histogram the first is that we are dealing uh, most probably with an overexposed um, photograph uh, so we can tell that from the from this uh, end of distribution with a kind of uh, uh, too many uh, pixels in the uh, almost uh, white so with a pure pure um, uh, so with a very high value both in the red green and, and, and blue channel and very few pixels actually no pixels close to uh, with values close to zero in either of the three channels so the the lowest values that we find the image are around 50 50 50 uh, which is uh, already a relatively light uh, gray so this tells us that we have no true black in the uh, image and that we uh, probably losing some information by uh, by having the the, the 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 saturation on the on the, the white uh, side aside from that we see that the, the distributions don't really have clear um, peaks uh, at least they are very uh, mixed uh, in, in all of the, uh, in the, the, the the channels so it's it's a bit hard to, to find out anything uh, and that's um, in part because um, the RGB uh, color representation, while it's very practical uh, to have a direct correlation with the, the, the human eye and with the, um, in the, the, the monitor that it's displaying, is not necessarily the, 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 the most useful one for image processing and for interpreting the information that it contains because it mixes different uh, information of a different nature. Uh, so that's why we have um, alternative color representation like HSV and some others um, because they uh, try to split this information between the, uh, uh, well, the, the actual uh, color information and so in the case of HSV the, the, the saturation and the value so those are the three channels of HSV the hue, the saturation and the value so the hue is, will correspond kind of the, to the the true color of uh, of a pixel um, so just the pure it will not say dark blue or light blue or medium blue it will just say it's, it's blue it's red it's green it's uh, yellow uh, etc um, the saturation will tell will tell us how how, how strong the color is or how dull the color, the color is. So very low saturation value will mean that the color is closer to a gray, whereas uh, a high value for, for the saturation will mean that we have a really bright uh, color. And um, the uh, value uh, V will be the uh, how light or dark a, a pixel is. So a value close to zero for black, a value close to one for uh, white. Um, so if we convert our image using scikit image, if we convert the RGB image to uh, HSV, um, we'll get an image with exactly the same shape. So it's still um, uh, three channels that we have, but now it's encoded in uh, floats. Uh, and each of the channel will be encoded between uh, with values between zero and uh, one. So this is something that we'll have to be aware of when we uh, try to do the histogram, because no, we don't have values between 0 and 255 but between 0 and and 1 um, but you can still uh, have a look at uh, the, um, the three channel uh, separately so now we can see that the, the nature of those channels is very uh, is very different so I can first put it in gray here just to, to show so if I just put them again in uh, in grayscale I can see that this uh, so the value here is just the image converted to grayscale basically so it just gives us the the intensity uh, of the of the light uh, in each um, each, each pixel so if you try if you use uh, photoshop or anything to just convert uh, the image from color image to uh, black and white image it will produce uh, this uh, so this will be the, the, the result um, but the two others are, are, are very uh, are very different uh, the 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 hue image is very difficult to uh, to interpret uh, when it's uh, put in grayscale like that because the there is no uh, like real uh, continuity uh, between the um, it's not like it's not going from a zero to a, to, to, to one really it's uh, values that uh, kind of uh, wrap around so zero and one are actually the, the same color it's uh, normally displayed as a uh, as a circle um, 
And so um, the a better way here to, to display it will be to use the HSV color map from Matplotlib. And that way we can actually see the uh, true color information uh, of each pixel. And so what do we have here? If we combine it with the um, saturation, we can see that in the uh, sky and in the, on the sea, we have uh, tones that are much closer to blue and which have a relatively high um, saturation, so showing that it will actually appear as blue in the final image. Whereas in the, uh, on the cliffs and uh, on the beach, um, we have colors that, that vary a lot, so that are kind of everywhere on the spectrum, but that are all with, with a very low saturation. And that's kind of expected whenever we get a very low saturation, because then the, the difference between um, one color and another becomes very, very uh, small, because it's just all different shades of gray. And uh, what we will get will be gray, but with a bit more red than uh, any other color, and so it will be put as red, or gray with a bit more green, with a bit more blue, with a bit more uh, uh, yellow, etc., etc. And so we'll get uh, something very noisy in terms of the, the hue uh, in there, but that's due just to the low, uh, to the very low um, saturation. And you can see that, in, again, the place with a higher saturation, here on the cliffs, for instance, we, we, we get um, something that is much less uh, noisy because the, the, the color information there is, is uh, uh, much more re reliable. Um, and so this all combines, of course, afterwards with the uh, value to, 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 to get the final, um, the final uh, color that, that needs to be rendered uh, in the RGB uh, image. Um, so same thing, we can also look at the histograms. And again, the histograms here will have a much different uh, look. And this kind of information is typically easier to, um, to interpret, uh, especially programmatically, because instead of having those uh, three um, RGMD channels that are really uh, interlinked together, here we have some things that are, are much more independent from, from each other, even though they are not completely independent. Uh, the information that they represent is is a lot more different than uh, the, the RGB uh, encoding. Uh, so here with the, the U histogram, so we have values a bit that appear a bit everywhere in the spectrum, but we have a clear peak here between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6, which correspond to the, to the blue um, to the blue color uh, in present in the image. We have another peak for the, the kind of yellow orange tones that we find a lot in the cliff and in the, in the beach, and then some other colors that appear a bit everywhere, mostly in the, in the, in the beach. Um, for the saturation, you can see that it's an image that's very, uh, with a very low saturation, that's a very gray image. Um, and uh, with the uh, value, we find out again uh, the, the, the same thing that we've seen with the RGB, which is that it's uh, clearly uh, over, uh, overexposed uh, picture uh, with very high saturation uh, almost everywhere, uh, very high value, sorry, almost everywhere, and uh, no pixels that have uh, a value uh, under 0 0.2 here, so um, everything is very bright in, in this image. Um, finally, another way that we can uh, represent all of that is to look at it as uh, scatter plots in uh, 3D uh, color space. So why, what does that mean? It means that we can take, uh, since every pixel here is associated to a triplet of value for the RG and D channel, we can take that triplet of value and use it as coordinates in a color space. So this color space will have as axis um, in this case would be, uh, for instance, the uh, red, green, and blue color uh, axis. And uh, the position of a point uh, in this space corresponds to uh, one possible color. So there are, uh, in total, 256 by 256 by 256 uh, colors that can be uh, encoded in, uh, in this uh, RGB um, space. And uh, all of the pixels in the image will be points in this space, which means that we can represent the entire image as a point cloud, um, which again, just like the histogram, loses the spatial information about where the pixels are in relation to each other, but which allows us to, uh, just in one uh, scatter plot, uh, display the, uh, the entire color distribution and, and, uh, and therefore also compare the color distribution of different images if we, if we look at them. Um, so in this uh, method here, I'm just uh, having a, so a method to, to, to display a scatter plots in 3D uh, with uh, Matplotlib. Um, and uh, so this method will take the 3D coordinates th of, the, of the points that you want to display and the color that we uh, want to associate with each uh, coordinate. 
and um, the idea here will be uh, so first we take um, for the for the coordinates the uh, we just reshape the image so that it's uh, 2d instead of 3d so uh, with every well, every row correspond to one pixel and every column to one of the channel so um, uh, that will be yeah, the, the shape will be the height times the width in one dimension uh, in the vertical axis and then three in the horizontal axis uh, and then in order to, to be able to, to, to visualize the result I will not put all the pixels because, because there are too many of them and you won't see anything in the plot and it will take a very long time to render so I just take uh, one pixel every 20 uh, pixels in the, uh, in the image um, and for the color I want to display the pixels in the scatter plot in the same color that they have in the image so that it's easier to uh, interpret so even like that, it already takes a couple of seconds to, to render uh, because the 3D plots are, are a lot harder to, 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 to render than the, the 2D plots. Uh, so those 3D plots can be uh, moved around uh, and are interactive, but uh, it's very, very slow. So I will not uh, touch, touch it <laughs> here, um, at least on my computer. Um, so what can we see in this uh, in this uh, scatter plot? Well, uh, as I said, it's uh, really uh, a way to summarize the entire uh, information that we have about the color distribution um, because we can see so all of the colors that are present uh, in the image, what part of the color space is actually occupied by uh, by our image, and two different images will um, will tend to have a color color um, a point cloud that is. Uh, very different and potentially characteristic and therefore can, that can be uh, used as a, as a characteristic of the image. Um, so we see in the uh, top, um, top right here, uh, values where with, um, so pixel is a very high value in both the, um, the red, green and blue uh, channels will be uh, white. Pixel with the very low values in both will be a kind of uh, very dark, so the black would be uh, over here, but here we have a kind of uh, a dark gray. Um, all of those are the, the, the mostly grayish uh, pixels that are uh, almost on a, on a line with uh, all values um, more or less equal in, in all dimensions. And then when we move over here, we get to the values that are much more saturated in the color, and these are the blue um, values with very high uh, blue I values in the blue channel, so in the in the vertical axis, uh, but uh, relatively low values in in the two other uh, channels. Um, so this is the, the the information summarized in the RGB space. We can do exactly the same in the HSV space. So typically in the HSV space, it would normally be represented as a, um, a cylinder because normally the the U is seen as uh, as I said as a circle. Uh, it goes from zero to 360 degrees, and so and back again but in this case we have the information that's a value between zero and one and it's a lot uh, harder to display it as the the, the cylinder uh, here so we can see still visualize information here we just have to imagine that normally if we go over there it wraps around to to to, to, to zero um, so in this case the information is, is kind of displayed um, differently because we encoded the, the color information differently uh, here we have the uh, the hue on this uh, on this uh, axis um, we can see the different colors, so we see here the, the kind of uh, yellows and orange and stuff like that, and here we have more the, the blues that are around the 0 0.5 uh, in this axis. Uh, on the, um, the second axis here we have the uh, saturation, so the, the values very close to zero here are the very desaturated uh, pixels, so here we see this, um, the, the grays and blacks and, and whites. And uh, in the, again, in the saturated part, in the more saturated part, we have mostly the blues and a bit of the uh, um, colors from the cliff. And again, the, the, the last axis is the value, so from uh, very dark to very uh, light. Um, so in the, in the next videos, we'll see a bit more how to use that information um, to, to for, for further uh, image processing um, and um, yeah, to how, how to take that information and uh, and uh, apply it, um, use it for for some uh, for different uh, image processing algorithms. Uh, that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.